Hello, this is a test for good notes. Anyone have good notes? I notice everybody is asking me every time how I create a chart system so fast or learn tunes so fast. And it's because I use good notes. So I just, this is how I go about doing it. <clears throat> just choose a paper. Using my fingers right now. This is so great about good notes. And if you hold down the screen, it'll give me text. I go 36 uh, font right here, 35 in it. And I just type in the title. I could shrink that down. I could use the lasso tool to move it. It's very flexible, it's non-linear, that's why I love it. Um, then I go through tunes, I'll uh, set up BPMs, and I'll choose a lower, uh, I'll choose a lower case or smaller case font. But also magnify and go into it. And then I'll actually handwrite the BPM. So I'll just write the BPM down here, say 75. And the reason why I do that is because the worship leader, generally when you listen to a worship tune, um, it'll be, you know, it's great for the recording, but when people try to sing along sometimes, nine times out of 10, we end up going two BPMs faster than the recordings, just because it just feels like you're, you're just trudging through mud. So. That's why I go about using a stylus because now I could just on the fly at worship rehearsal or rehearsal, I could just erase it and he goes, can you make it faster? 77, and I could just erase it. And I could have used a font tool as well, but it's just, it's easier that way. And I definitely use um, the font tool again for <clears throat> different sections of the songs as a song form because uh, when there's so many songs it's just the song form gets lost on me they start kind of blending into each other because sometimes they all sound the same so um, I'll just do like a verse one section here oh I forgot the intro usually there's a tune intro I go INTR space I'll drag it up there. And I try to create these boxes as small as I can because if you don't if you don't make it as small as you can and use the lasso tool, if there's another like say four bars, this is how I write out bars. That's a four bars right there. And I try to keep it tight as possible because sometimes when you try to select one, you'll end up selecting both, right? So if I go. See how it selects both. So I try to keep it as tight as possible. Um, and then I'll also put the artist. So sometimes all the songs can be covered by different artists. So I'll just say Hill Song in this case. And I try to keep it organized by making it smaller slightly. So it's a Hill Song version. And I'll put it over here because then I'll know. Or sometimes I'll go Hill Song. And then the church version, right? Church A or something like that. Or Worship Pastor A because they have a completely different um, rendition of it. Sometimes they'll have a different interpretation. I'll choose my stylus color. And I'll use this little, um, this little uh, geometry tool just to keep a line like that. Just to, just to delineate between all the different things I'll also um, you know cut and paste copy paste so then I know that a lot of songs are are either um, a lot of the songs are either eight bar like sections are eight bar sections or 12 or 16 usually in these worship songs and then what I'll also do is sometimes if, say it's like a Tom Groove, 
but I want the kick to be sparse. It's a four measure. I'll just put a kick right there, and then I'll say Tom Groove. You know? And then I'll also delineate uh, the dynamics. I'll say maybe Mezzo Forte, just to let me know that it's going to be pretty quiet, whereas this probably intros are probably really Forte, right? And I'll take these guys just to make sure that they're only selected. I'll go edit, copy, paste, and uh, do that. Maybe I'll write, you know, maybe it's a four on the floor song, like, uh, um, what's that Wickham song? Anyways, and I'll just write like slosh, meaning half open high hat with a snare. Actually, I'll even say snare groove, or groove, excuse me. I'm using my finger right now instead of a stylus. And you can buy a stylus on Amazon for like 10 bucks, and it works just as great, if not better. And so, probably there's a chorus, chorus one, use the right um, font size. Maybe the course is doubled up. Copy, paste. And the beauty of the system is, um, I could just I could just make the whole thing. I could run the whole thing down. Uh, just want to. I don't have to do DSL coda and get mixed up because I'm terrible at trying to get to the next section or jumping sections like on a chart. So I just run the whole song down, straight down, so it's easier to see. And then sometimes I'll delineate again the different sections visually just by adding things like, you know, an arrow here for a chorus. And then what I'll also do is, like, if I have an interlude or a solo, um, you know, I'll just, I'll just put a star here. Be like star because you know he's going to be the star at that moment. <laughs> Although Jesus is the ultimate star. <laughs> All right, here we go. And then copy that section, paste, and sometimes it could be longer. And this, you know, sometimes usually those sections are full bore. So I go four on the floor with a kick, ride, you know, groove. And I'll just be like fortissimo, you know, you're going to go all out. So my notations are basic snare drum reading lessons, quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes. And uh, the other great feature about it, once I'm done, I put it on uh, no stylus mode because it's the other great thing. You could actually flip to the next song because I was creating binders full of sheet music and I would carefully um, write them out in um, pencil and then use Sharpie markers. But then by the time I get to the rehearsal, the arrangement changes and I'm like, okay, I can't do anything on the fly. In this case, like, oh my gosh, let's move the solo section down here. Let's, let's create another, let's say, let's do another verse, right? So we'll just copy this. You can just do it on the fly and you're not scrambling with your eraser or anything. I just change this to verse, verse 2, right? There we go. It's verse 2. Boom. So, and I can change the second verse dynamics to, say, more for, forte or fortissimo. And maybe it's not a tom groove. Maybe it's a snare. You know, it's a hi-hat groove. But I just say double H for hi-hat. You could use whatever delineation you could, you know, or nomenclature you want for yourselves. But see, it's the beauty of it. And I can also flip to the next song. I don't have to worry about pages flying off. I don't have to worry about um, lighting for the page. And usually stage lighting, they don't like it. You know, like people who are, who are working the lights or production per people at church, they'll be like, gosh, I can't stand that little, <laughs> that little light that's on your your music stand. Well, I need to see it. Well, 
it's really messing with the whole the vibe of the stage that we created. Okay, well, we just have this um, iPad, and I could just flip through the channel. It's already illuminated, right? And I also, um, what I generally do is, here's an example. See this right here, this uh, number one we just covered recently, and then number two, we just did a, a worship at, um, at a, a friend's church for Christmas Eve. And so what it is, is I create a number like that on the side of the, on the side, like six, because what that did, that, what that tells me right here is that it's, uh, it's the song on the set list. Uh, when I had run a metronome, and I know a lot of you guys run Ableton and whatnot, but I don't know Ableton well enough, and uh, uh, we just don't run Ableton. And I'd like to learn it someday, but in the meantime, um, my click on you can't you can't really um, program your click to to um, to write names of the song. So what I do is I have a big old number, um, say on a set list. Let's see here, I'll just add a page below, just as an example, and say on a set list, I have song A, right, song A, and song B, or song 2, 1, 2, um, I put the tempo there, 77, but then also in a square I'll put 1. Because I want to, I want to make sure that the tempo matches the song sheet. Uh, and sometimes it gets, I know, in the heat of the moment, and when you're flipping through pages, you just want to make sure that one is the right program for that particular metronome. Because, uh, you know, they'll be like, yeah, sometimes I get off from the metronome in the, in the song page. So that's why I do that. So it's the BPM here. And then the uh, the sheet number there and the song title just to make sure. And then, of course, I'll if the song goes into each other, I'll tie it over. And sometimes I'll just say, you know, this is like the set list, right? I'll say swells here in between with the mallet uh, or count off to the next one. So. Uh, and that's what I've been doing as far as doing these uh, doing these charts. And also, one of the great things is you can actually export it. And I can put it up in the cloud, right? Let's export current page. And then I'll go like song test. And then I'll go format, good notes. I'm using good notes. Sorry about that. And I use a box. And then I'll say charts. Um, these are the different churches I'll play at. And recently it was Vessel Collective. So I go upload. And you know, you notice I put um, different versions of the song by who does it, the artist as well as the BPM. And I generally put it up as good notes because then you could appendix or you could append to it. Um, say, uh, let's see, here's, here's, um, yeah, here's some other ones. Let's see, I have Matt Marr, Elevation. Uh, but anyway, it just gives me the information right away. It's kind of like when you're saving off stems and you want to know what the BPMs for your, uh, um, desktop application is for your for your recording applications or whatnot. It just gives you all that information. So hopefully that'll give you some help. And if you have some more questions, feel free to just uh, comment down below, and I'll try to answer that for you. Okay. All right. Thank you, and uh, hopefully this helps you. Take care.